vegetable. You know what? I don't feel like zapping my voice before I uh, start on Final Fantasy IX for the night, so... Uh, year of our lives. Back then we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We're on a wild journey to discover who we really were. yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the monster prom. I remember it clearly, six, six weeks were left. As we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to match the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates, Miranda Vanderbilt, 19. A sweet mermaid princess who was cute as she was genocidal. Damien LeVay, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love fire. <laughs> Scott Howell, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with his stupidly hard and huge heart. <laughs> Liam De Lioncourt, the fl uh, a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hit that he was truly a lovable dork. Yay! Polly Geist, 22. Party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. What? And Vera Oberlin, a mean, self-made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear it had to be one of them. But who? We only had six weeks to choose for our prom date, and even more daunting, we only had six weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more. We're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever, TM, will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into, s into your character stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start. Which inanimate object do you think would make the best girlfriend or boyfriend, provided it would you went criminally insane? Uh. Human size pillow depicting character of one. So, uh, in fact, I <laughs> as was clearly intended by God. Sure. If you put a curse on your worst enemy, what would it do? Worst we call and fall in love with a wonderful person and be happily married for years before they realize that all this time their partner was a wild panther in disguise. Then the panther viciously devours my enemy. Classic. You can't rely on the effectiveness of curse you prefer to take care of your enemies the old fashioned way. Exposed to unsafe doses of radiation over the course of several years. Because of always meeting obnoxious people at parties who are super into new fad diets and explain them in detail. The last one's just too cruel. If you were an ice cream, what flavor would you be? Mint, tequila, rainbow, spicy chocolate. Success. Spicy chocolate.
right. Okay. Bearing with me that this isn't the first time I've ever played this, uh, so I'm... Sensationalist videos and impossible promises. Nice. Getting 100,000 money, but almost everything goes to cover costs and you keep too money. You're bored and doodling in your notebook when Damien suddenly appears. What the fuck is this doodle? Is that me? Am I cuddling a shirtless with Liam? What loser? Dude. If you're looking for a shortcut to the morgue, this is your lucky day. Give me a good reason not to cuddle your face with my fists. Oh no, they discovered your erotic fan art. Uh, okay. Can't think of any way to calm, the both, you know, calm both of them down. Maybe the right answer can calm one of them down. What the fuck is this? This fuckery. See. Calm down, baby. You're such a bigot. I heard about this yaoi. It's a millenary form of art from the East. Delightful celebration of love and desire. What? I must admit this. God damn it. Oh, raw talent. Look at the strokes, the expressions, the suggestive placements of the hand. It conveys so much with so much. Dude, are you high? Look at this other one. You're fucking pregnant. This is insanity. It's not insanity, but neither is this one exactly yaoi. It's impreg. Behold, what a way of standing up against the gender status quo. They're challenging, uh, they're changing the world one pregnant doodle at a time. Come out. There's no way you can... <laughs> There's no uh, way you convince me this shit isn't weird or wrong or problematic. I'm out of this plot line. Been searching for the pinnacle of art for generations. Little did I know it was here all along, in the ancient form of Yaoi. Will you accept me as your student? May I call you Sensei? This is a good thing. Uh, plus two creativity equal plus one smarts. my little shop. Oh, okay. I'll buy some shit. I have shit that will boost your stats, shit that will lead you into stupid new adventures, even some shit that might look, uh, be much needed at a very specific moment. So, take a look. Take this for a ghost costume, but most of your classroom classmates are idiots. Fictional poster. Russian novel with insightful approach to universal matters such as love and death. Things up a bit. 
not that, that they were rehearsing for the class play. It's, it's as though the muse, you know, muses themselves descended, of, descended to give you a figurative blowjob. The performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rare for high school play standards. Plus two pay to You see Liam talking to Miranda. Miranda looks confused and Liam looks frustrated. is the experience of going into a bathroom thinking it's an art piece. The artists purposely give the room uh, number of the bathroom as the room number of the exhibit. Even though there was a whole room full of these paintings everywhere, everywhere uh, elsewhere in the buildings, it was revolutionary. It certainly seems very complicated. Personally, I prefer exoplanet sculptures of the Atlantean Fifth Dynasty. You know, the man in the moon, face on Mars, all of Pluto, art on such a grand scale. It's not art. That's populism at its worst. Well, I don't think that bathroom business sounds like art. How are we supposed to discuss art if we can't even agree on what it is? Oh, if only someone would come along and provide a satisfying definition of art, I'd so be, I would be so pleased. I've got this, no problem. It's so simple. Making worthless things and very expensive things. Art isn't art unless you feel bad feelings inside. Exactly. This is why, for example, George Sarat's A Sunday Afternoon is not art, whereas getting stuck in an elevator for my hours is. But the face on Mars does not give me bad feelings. Well, then obviously it's not art, Miranda. Try to keep up. If it's not art, then what is it? A mean thing your ancestors did to the, uh, to the Martians with primitive nuclear weapons. <laughs> oh yes, I suppose it was that. You're both so smart. You gained some disturbing knowledge about the history of the solar system. And also two smarts, one creative. Today you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes, after all the monster nonsense and dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this high school. You gain plus two smarts. Someone taps on your shoulder hesitantly. You turn around to see Leon. He's carrying a brand new notebook and a very Japanese pencil case. Oh shit, that's right. You promised to teach him the secrets of Yaoi. He bows to you. Hi, Gozanasu Sensei. I'm learning Japanese so to make this more authentic. I'm ready for my first lesson. You know nothing about teaching Yaoi. You just kind of just draw a naked dude snuggling and hope he turns people on. But Liam won't buy that. He thinks you're a Yaoi master. You've got to teach him something. He's right here reading. Okay, think. What's the first lesson of Yaoi? Ten lessons. Settle down for a long session of cuddling. Hey, you keep breathing really loud in my ear. Can you stop? Um, kind of crushing my arm. Would you mind shifting a little bit to the left? Looks like you're keeping me re repeatedly at the base of my spine. That seems dangerous. That's, uh, the disengages. I see. You're teaching me how not to cuddle. How brilliantly counterintuitive. Yes, I feel it. Only five minutes is on completely irrecoverably unattractive to you. Which is a shame. I was sort of looking forward to the student master romance narrative. Oh well, learning comes first. Right. Learning comes first. No, you'll never come... <laughs> Oof. Two charm, minus one fun. Table he chose is quite crowded. 
Cream sits across from Miranda, who is flanked by two well-dressed servants. One of the servants cuts a slice of Salisbury steak and feeds it to the other. Uh, Seriously, Miranda, you have servants to chew your food for you? Ah, what? Of course not, that would be barbaric. Servant happily swallows a Salisbury steak. I have servants to eat for me. They're called eating serfs. Don't you have any? First of all, no, I don't eat food. Second of all, that totally defeats the purpose of eating. Aren't you worried about starving? Why would I be? My serfs get all the calories I need to stay fit and healthy. <sighs> I have no objection. I have no objective to reason to care about this, but suddenly it's all I care about. Someone convince Miranda to stop this madness. You should start this madness. Liam, imagine all the food you can Instagram without having to eat any of it. He's eating for himself. No, it can't be. Gordo, say it isn't true. But Gordo can't say anything because his mouth is full of delicious Salisbury steak. Salisbury steak, which he is obviously eating for his own benefit. Traitorous dog. Do you want me to starve to death? Is that your plan? I think maybe he was just taking advantage of the fact that you don't understand how food works. Taking advantage of me? Scoundrel. Burpee, eat Gordo for me at once. Two serfs look at each other and then stuff as much food as they can in their mouths before fleeing the cafeteria. Alas, how will I ever get my recommended daily allowance of nutrients now? You could try eating myself, but how? You and Leah have a ton of laughing at Miranda as she learns how to eat food apparently for the first time in her life. job at acting. Right, so hard that some of your classmates in the audience throws some roses at you. Seven roses to be exact. Damn. Roses aren't a valid currency or stat in this game. Anyway, check your converter out to see if it can translate into something a bit more useful. Hmm. Seems seven roses equals two creativi uh, creativity points. Sweet. Two cursed it. Artists are finally Encore and you're exiting the auditorium with everyone else. On way out, you notice Liam and Lastro was scribbling viciously in his notebook. Oh, he's extremely so condescending. The actors were played by actors. There was no meta. Here's the angst of social media. Have you seen the that pale excuse for a thespian attempted to interact with viewers? Language. Excuse me, but thou and thee are officially over once I turn in my notes. Obviously, you didn't enjoy this murder of theater itself. How would you fix this crime against art? The audience is the villain. Destroy them from the stage. Hack the social media. Import their files from. Import the fires of hell. As they choke on brimstone and brimstone and spam, they realize they were the monster all along. That might just work. We'll make it an apron stage to make sure that the weight of hubris falls hard on the audience when the anagnosis. Anagnosis. That word. Uh, the cathartic realization of their hardship. You understood literally none of the horse's words, but Liam got to your heart. You get plus one creativity, plus one smarts, plus one charm. Spend that day, or you spend some time on the library's PCs, mining some bitcoins. Yeah. It's supposed to have something to do with solving algorithms and the rise of cryptocurrency. But you guess that nobody actually has a fucking idea how it really works. Anyway, you gain plus two bitcoins, which is equal to plus two million dollars. Which unfortunately is about to is equal to uh, two monster dollars, so uh, plus two money. 
walking with Liam later, when suddenly a holy crossbow slams its wall next to you. It's the Slayer! Prepare to die! What she said. You flee with Liam and manage to get out of sight. Now is the perfect time for you to hide while Liam try turns into a bat. But he's not transforming. You ask him why the hell he's not just standing there instead of changing. It's just... Seems a little cliche, doesn't it? A vampire turning into a bat? Honestly, I'm over it. We're gonna turn and say, for example, the concept of a bat. Now, that would be a change worth making. You don't know what that means, but it, if you can't get me to turn to a, uh, something soon, he'll get you both caught. You quickly tell him to turn and change it to the general feeling. of distraction and practicality. I admit I have difficulty imagining the concept of a bat, but a general feeling of ease? I, I experience that many times a day. Liam disappears in proof of purple smoke. You don't know where he's gone, but you don't feel good about it. What's the matter? Do you have a shirt on inside out? How all your friends been pretending to like you? Suddenly, the Slayer bursts and she steps one step towards you, then stops. I do feel like I left my stove on when I left the house this morning. Shit. The Slayer flees to check on her stove. Liam turns uh, back into a vampire, and you immediately feel better. Oh man, my soul has never felt so tormented. I have to do that more often. Yogi know, decides to do it when you're not around, but you're glad he's happy. You gain plus two smarts and plus one creativity. security uniforms. What do these why do, what do these two have bodyguards now? They aren't bodyguards, they're food guards. The principal giant spider found out we weren't eating during lunch, so he assigned guards to us because he thinks we have an eating disorder. And we do have an eating disorder. It's called being dead. Except it's not an eating disorder, it's an identity and a lifestyle. Death style. The point is that they don't let us leave until we've eaten our food, which, we never, which will be never, and I have a meeting at the Smug Superiority Club to con conduct next period. I can't be late. If you could just figure out a way around these food IR guards for us, I'd be super grateful, like, in a sexy way. Well, you can't say no to that. Time to enact your fiendishly clever plan. Artistic subtlety of performance artist Marina Abravelmek. Pour Liam's food into Polly's plate and through her lap. No, this is literally the exact opposite of what I wanted. Good lord, what a tableau. A ghost bewildered by a mountain of unwanted food. This is perhaps my most daring food pick yet. You guys are really throwing me under the bus here, which isn't cool, because being thrown under a bus is how I, totally how I died. What you talking about, Polly? I've clearly consumed all the food, and quite honestly, quite honestly and forthrightly. Luckily for you and Liam, the hot wounds are totally morons, with no secondary theory of pint. They instantly believe the answers. Liam whisks you away to the, uh, to the afternoon meeting in the Smug Superiority Club, where you spend hours practicing your sneers and gazing into each other's eyes. escalated so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from the nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. Plus two fun. Later, you see Liam rolling his eyes at his phone. You ask him what's up before he can roll them right out of his head. I'm having trouble with the status on Facebook. 
expressed a positive opinion about bug manicures, which I obviously meant ironically. And now my so-called friends are responding with blatantly unironic pictures of themselves with sentinels glued to their nails. I know being aloof and misunderstood is my brand, but I want to be misunderstood on my terms, not theirs. What kind of status can I post it be idiot proof? friends are way too curious to let the complete plug in the house slide. I never let dead topics slide. It's in their blood. Or lack of blood. A big blog would attract them like unattended uh, brain on a plate. Enough. Ugh, never mind. Should have fake blogged your suggestion. Too late now. Too smart to be this. astonished by some new stuff you learn in class. The high school is about doing stupid shit with your friends and trying to find true love. A move out of class would actually be useful. What a nice surprise. Get plus one valuable lessons. Uh, good luck trying to get Zen within the game. And do smarts. Liam isn't paying attention to any of that. He corners you afterward uh, to lecture on Instagram, Instagram filters. No one seems to understand about filters is that they're not about making pictures better. They're about making pictures browner and harder to see. That's why I use my propriety filter for almost all my photos. Infinite taupe. It's also probably why I have only six Instagram followers, but we must all make sacrifices for our art. In any case, I have to go. There's a dead rat in the parking lot. I sent it must document. As soon as Miranda uh, leaves on, Miranda picks up of an air-conditioning duct. Goodness, the situation is even more dire than I thought. If, oper if Operation Make the Unpopular is to succeed, we must get started immediately. What's that? Why, well, yes, of course, you're part of my operation. I unwillingly force people into my service all the time. Oh, you want to know why it's called Operation Make the Unpopular again? Well, it's been alive for, like, centuries, right? I'm sure he must have been popular. I'll check the history books later. If there's no time now, phase one is getting me more Instagram followers. I took the liberty of having my royal spies discover a password to his account, so we can give it a total makeover. But what to do? Oh. Ah, yes. Just as father pays millions to vote for him and our fair and democratic elections. In fact, I think I can cut costs by paying one of the father's clone smiths to simply replicate the same thousand people a thousand times. Uh, I ask if she thinks that ethical, but she's as confused about the meaning of ethics as she is about fair and democratic elections. Soon the plot and the requisite clones are hatched. Run to the Lee on the few uh, in the halls a few hours later. I am distraught. My careful husband and unpopularity is crumbling before my eyes. Look at all these followers. Look at the comments. Totally real account 66. I love you, Liam. Another equally real account. You're so obscure and avant-garde. The sentiments your expressions are objectively correct, and yet, no. I cannot give in to the lure of the limelight. In spite of this, Liam seems to be enjoying himself quite a bit. I spend the rest of the day helping him curate his feed, gaining two charm and one fun in the process. All right. Hmm. Take your seat between the strongest and the smartest men you know. Liam appears to be taking very intense pictures of his bizarre looking food. Scott is looking at about as confused as you are currently. Mm. Liam, food is delicious. It's for eating. That's why they call it lunchtime. You know those statements is wrong, but they also are quite connected. Scott, if I had the capacity, I assure you, I would still ignore the actual content of the food in favor of finding the perfect combination for a flawless Instagram post. 
I actually really hate him. Oh, I see. You're going to post a picture to advertise the food to people who can actually eat it. You're so smart. I'll be happy to eat your food for you. I'm afraid your palate is way too unsophisticated to appreciate these rare Japanese delicacies. The Japanese? Do you have any Scott snacks? Uh, do you have any Scott snacks? Scott snacks? Oh, you know what? Fine. I've taken all the pictures I need. Eat whatever you want. Thanks, Liam. Oh, they're, they all look so yummy. I don't know where to start. Yellow, any ideas? Maybe your choice of snack can get one of these boys to one barricade snack on you and an innuendo ways. Not really. Not literally. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Lychee flavored custards. Oh. I always knew you were a monster of impeccable taste. Actually, that isn't true. I assume everyone has a horrible taste in this snack. In this case, it's pretty clear that this assumption does not apply to your beautiful self. I say beautiful, I meant your aesthetic is beautiful. Because we have the same aesthetic. The light tea custard is, or has already gotten more likes than any other food on this table. It's absolutely delicious. The, ta wait, the taste possibly have no, any relevance to a conversation about food. Then you're so smart that I don't even understand how that makes any kind of sense. Thank you for being with some, uh, being someone with whom I can actually discuss the importance and lens of Japanese food pictures. It appears to be you and me against the fairy in our world. Yeah, stupid everyone else for actually eating their food and not taking pictures. Thank goodness and you and Liam have each other. XO. XO. in class play, you totally forget your lines. It's terrible. Well, you don't let that get you down. You start improvising all your lines. It's marvelous. Some enhances the path of the play in unexpected ways. And that's saying something, since half of your improvisation is a rap battle against your inner fears. Plus two creativity. Later, you see Liam beaming to himself. Liam? Beaming? Here's my application to write for Virtue magazine was received and accepted. I knew my pitch would hook them. Imagine the edgiest, most irreverent article subject you can think of. Now double it. That's my article subject. See, I used a writing technique on them called lying. It's very effective. Up until they call your bluff. Now I've actually I've got to actually write an article. I have no idea what to write. You, save me from the consequences of my actions. Suggest an idea that lives up to my own hype. Chilling X Rose on the Pasta Industries Griffin Trafficking. Ah. Uh. Mm. Did you not. Did you even read last month's virtue? Kim Ken was legalized last month. After every senator who opposed it mysteriously died of chimera poisoning. Now they sell Kim Ken powder at the gas station now. Right between the chewing gum and the baby fingers. The only Kim Ken could be any more mainstream as if they gave it to us at our cafeteria lunches. Much they're talking about doing. Farm truly is insidious. Stocks off to ask literally anyone else for help. It sounds like you've been paying too much attention. Or too much for your Kim Ken. He is too smart to much harm. performance that blows your mind. Ends up being a sensation on YouTube. Here's your game plus 10 coolness. Who cares? He's not trying to romance your classmates. Where is he? We hope not. Oh, you also get plus 2 smarts. Hooray. And afterwards, Miranda beckons you from a darkened corner. Psst. Co-conspirator. Over here. Phase 1 of Operation Make Liam Popular again was an overwhelming success. Liam is an internet popular. How does it make him real life popular? better way of making him prom king. Unfortunately, when I asked him to run for prom king, he said, and I quote, never, 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 not in a hundred years, and that's not an exaggeration because I've been alive for hundreds of years, and I've never run for prom king there, so there you go. 
which was clearly his cryptic way of saying he wants us to make a prom king. My first thought was uh, to murder the current prom king after establishing Liam as his rightful heir, but I couldn't find any bloodline charts to work from. So I suppose was to engage in this democratic election the school is holding. Now, how can we secure a win for Liam when he is opposed to running or making any effort to win? Course. Election rigging. The old standby. I'll send my king's royal vote buyer immediately. Silly me. How does one elect a king? There you watch prom king election forecast. I'm not sure why your school has its own prom royalty forecast, or who pays for it, but it says that, unsurprisingly, we will win by almost a million votes with advantage. I don't know what to say. Who knew there were a million monsters at schools who thought I should be prom king? I didn't think of it. I knew there were a million monsters at this school. I'm burning my chest. Is this shame or having become mainstream or is it joy? Nope, it's neither. I just need to drink somebody's blood. Catch you later. Who does catch you later? And you take him out to get fresh from Tuxedo. He never looked hotter. He came plus two fun, two fun plus one. Take your seat beside arguably the two coolest monsters in all of Spooky Guy. Here's hoping you can keep up with them. Vera, are you eating Manticore steaks again? Yes, and it's delicious. Don't you know the amount of cruelty involved in mainstream meat production industry? Yes, and it's delicious. Besides, then, you're a vampire. Don't you only consume things that are dead? Well, yes, I suppose, but. It's always ethically stored, organic, free-range, and human. Human population is out of control, and eating is the most environmentally responsible thing to do. Listen, Liam, I have now have a personal feud with every single animal I eat. I make sure to meet all of them first, and ensure I'm devouring only the ones I eat the most. It makes it extra tasty. Well, then, surely you can inflict such pain without going through the cruel meat industry and supporting factory farming. Isn't home cruelty better anyway? I mean, you may actually have a point there. And if I get my hand in the pot, I can inflict even more effective and specific pain. I bet there's a way to make money off this too. Hang on. Somehow I've ended up arguing against my own interests here. Liam, do you want to find an innovative and creative ways to be more social, uh, to move society forward? Or do you want to oppose cruelty like every other weak mainstream loser? I can actually hear Liam's brain is shaking as it struggles between his desire to be perceived as ethical and his desire to be perceived as creative. Maybe you can step in and help out. Those who kill may lose their lives, but uh, what about their afterlives? Instead of just letting their spirits go to waste, as a byproduct of meat industry, let's serve their eternal souls as a side dish. Animals are already suffering from ignorance. If <laughs> they wanted to increase their pain, the best we can do is teach them the concept of death so that they really fear their fate. Let's educate them on metaphysics. Ah. Well, I can't contain animal cruelty, but I wholeheartedly support animal education. I do like animals, but their illiteracy is my fourth least favorite thing about them. Right between their poor taste and fashion and simplistic views on German cinema. It's not the worst idea you've ever had. Although, face it yellow, you're not known for having You're known for having terrible eyes about 50% of the time. I don't really see a building uh, an empire of, of private schools for cattle, but with my business acumen, I guess it's possible. I can rest secure in the knowledge that I'm solving the bovine education crisis. Helping Liam help cows is like helping you help Liam choose you to go to prom with. Or something. Alright! Money. <laughs> you want this, you sick pervert? A bag of regular 
cocaine. ton of spells that are all as cool as they are seemingly useless. Spell to renew sticker stickiness. Spell to turn chocolate and vanilla turn ice cream into vanilla and chocolate ice cream. A spell to gain plus two smarts. You actually use that last spell. And you gain plus two smarts. Lately you've been cute with the input in ironic sense. He seems to tolerate you, which is like third place base for Liam. So tonight you're having a picnic at the graveyard. It's like a date, except it totally is a date, because dates are super cliche. But it's totally a date. It's time. You're gonna kiss him. You've practiced a lot with your pillow, which might or might not be a body pillow customized to look like a real-sized full-body picture of Liam. Maybe. There you go. You know what, Yellow? I've been thinking about this concept of kissing. And not because being with you makes me think about kissing. But, don't you think kissing is such an outdated and vulgar concept? The best way of showering your, showering your feelings is putting your mouth in another person's mouth? But you wanted to put your mouth over his mouth, goddammit. Come on, y'all. promise just around the corner. Quickly, think of a never-before-seen way of showing your uh, feelings to Liam. Oh, God. Being figured of the shrouds. Real winners are always... Ah... Uh, Sure, which one to go with. Listen to a very charming song. It's later the graveyard queue comes to kick you out because singing is a cool thing to do in a graveyard. I mean, it has a point, right? Singing as a graveyard isn't cool, especially if singing is that bad. There's a point. with what Vera just said, but agreeing is something that only young people do. When you agree, Vera, nice try, Liam, but I think you're getting away from the point. So, Interloper still wants to sit with us. Well, if he wants to sit, he's going to have to prove how cool he is as cool as we are. But without, like, trying to prove how he's trying so cool. So, what's it going to be? Is that sarcasm? No, of course not. Yellow is clearly being totally sincere. Yellow's again. Are you two doing this on purpose? <sighs> Why on earth would we do that? Yeah, I can't tell whether you're being sincere or ironic. It's so, so cool. Everyone knows clear and efficient communication is the least cool thing of all. You would meet with your open disdain for language. I can't tell if you're being serious or not. Exactly. Vera and Liam invite uh, me. Like, get to sit with them and chat. By the end of lunch, none of you has any idea what anyone else meant. So cool. It seems like you aren't getting classic creativity boots from the Arcadoria. And afterwards, while taking a, talking to your classmates, you're having trouble conveying the point, uh, point in discussion, so you decide to convey it through music. You start singing, and suddenly everyone else joins you in a kick-ass musical number. It's so amazing that people with whom you were arguing totally get your point and change their minds once you open the to sing this number. You gain plus two creativity. Out of the way, you hurry. Secret meaning with Moran. 
propaganda. Oh, how Make Operation, Operation Make Liam Popular is, again, is a rousing success. And for the record, I discovered Liam was popular for a three month period, in the early 16th century, so the name fits. All that remains for us is to wait for the prom and celebrate our. your deception? I knew it was too good to be true. My idiosyncrasies are remarkable, but they aren't marketable. This was a cruel joke, wasn't it? A bet between two popular kids that can make an outcast loser into a prom king? Well, guess what? The circus is over, and the clown is climbing into his tiny car and going home. Along with the twelve other tiny clowns in the... If the metaphor holds, which it doesn't, it was a bad metaphor. Goodbye! No, Liam, I wasn't trying to be mean. I don't have a mean bone in my body. I don't even have bones. Might check that affirmation later. Oh, fish sticks. If we don't do something to fix this, all our hard work and subterfuge will be for naught. How do we make amends? Surely not with some sort of overwrought romantic gesture defying all logic. Tell Moran not to worry. You've seen plenty of teen rom coms. You know where, how this part goes. quite enough money to hire professional word spellers, so you just post an ad on Craigslist. Alright Liam, we know you're mad, so we want to do something glabber to apologize. Please come to the top of an extremely tall ladder my family owns. Well, alright, but only because ladders are appealingly retro. Time for what seems like weeks. The air grows thin, birds bite your earlobes, but finally, alright Liam, look down. We have a message for you. Wow, a million people forming the words... Pumpkin lasagna? It's supposed to say, I'm sorry. Well, okay, well it doesn't. It clearly says pumpkin followed by lasagna. You may climb an endless ladder just to promote your culinary preferences. You selfish weirdo, goodbye. He turns to a bat and flies away. Miranda dives in the bucket of water far down below. If you climb all the way back down by yourself, you lose minus two boldness and minus one fun. attracted to you in that way. Actually, I think the only way I'm attracted to you is through the tiny gravitational force that your body has a solid mass. That's something, right? Are you serious? <laughs> this failure haunted you for the rest of your life, and you never moved on, becoming a total and constant failure. You never succeeded at anything again. Except for the time you won a monster got, Monsters Got Talent, but your talent was being a failure at love, and astonished everyone how bad you were at romance. Not any less sad, though. Most likely to become a zombie. Well then. Those six weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the month's prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning about who we were and who we could be. You know what? Like it always ha does, life happened, and it was wonderful. Liam kept doing art so hard that he eventually evaporated and became the concept of coolness itself. As he left the physical plane, the last thing Liam did was give everyone a condescending look. Vera built an Oberlin Empire in endless greatness. And they own a shameless number of companies, so now that they are also in lots of sketchy business. But no, no, uh, no one does anything about it. I mean, who the hell tried to stop Vera Overland? Damien loved fire to the very end. Unfortunately, that wasn't a super legal affair, and he ended up in prison for arson. Fortunately, prison was family flammable. For those six weeks, the Monster Prom seemed larger than life, and then it was gone, just like that. The battle for Monster Prom might have ended then and there, but there were plenty of battles left in that war called Youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. I 
unexpected failure, to be honest. I'm not terribly great at this, at these sorts of games. monster prom uh, yeah I want to give a special uh, thanks to a friend who uh, gifted me this uh, a few weeks ago or no, a couple weeks ago uh, Nat thank you and I hope things are looking up for you